Hi guys! Welcome to my channel. I'm Juliana. I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love you've given my recent video on always looking polished. In that video, I talked a little bit about my hair routine and some of you guys commented saying that you wanted an, a more in-depth version. I thought I would incorporate that into this video which is going to be volumizing tips for fine hair. If you don't personally have fine hair and this is not your hair type, don't worry, I have lots of hair videos coming soon, so stay tuned. Throughout this video, I'm going to be mentioning a lot of products that I use or I recommend, and I'll make sure to compile them all in a folder in my LTK so it's really easy for you guys to browse the items that I'm talking about in this video. So the link to my LTK will be down below in the description. I'm certainly not a professional hairstylist, nor do I claim to be. I'm just someone who's always had finer hair. These are just tips that I've gathered throughout the years to make it always feel like I'm having a good hair day. I personally can't really be bothered with spending a lot of time on my hair every single day. So because of that, all of these should be pretty quick things that you can implement into your morning and nighttime routine. This video is going to be split up into these sections, which I've also linked the timestamps for down in the description. Alright, let's start! Before we get into the tips, I want to define what fine hair is. It's actually not necessarily the same thing as having thin hair. Fine hair is when the actual hair strand is small. And thin hair is when you don't have a lot of hair strands. So if someone's hair is thin, that refers more to the amount of hair that you have. An easy way to know if you have this hair type is to take a strand of your hair and compare it to a strand of thread. If your hair is thinner than the thread, you probably have fine hair. You can definitely have fine hair and still have a large quantity of hair, if that makes sense. But fine hair can easily get weighed down and look flat, making it appear thin. So because of this, even though having fine hair and thin hair isn't necessarily the same thing, a lot of the tips I'm going to be mentioning in this video for fine hair will also apply to thin hair. Fine hair can also look pretty frizzy and fuzzy um, easily and can lack shine as well. You can have straight, wavy, or curly hair with a fine hair type. Personally, I have super straight hair, so I use things like heatless curls to really build up my volume, which I'll get into later in this video. So first, let's start with the best hairstyles for this hair type. If you're looking to get a haircut, the best length for fine hair is going to be shoulder length or shorter. Any longer can make your roots look flat because it's being pulled down by the weight of your hair. I kind of feel like a hypocrite for giving this suggestion, but I think we all personally have a hair sweet spot. When I was younger, I used to have much longer hair. It was more around my hips and my roots would always get really weighed down so the top of my head tended to look pretty flat. So I often got this unfortunate triangle hair shape where it was pretty flat at the top but exploded uh, in volume at the bottom. I found that my current length, which is just below my bust when my hair is straight, is the longest my hair can tend to be before my scalp looks a little bit flat. Of course, there's no hard and fast rule saying that you can't have long hair. Personally, I'd say to just try and test different lengths out and see where your hair volume is most happy. Also, note that this tip really doesn't take into account other factors such as your face shape. Let me know if you would like a video exploring that, like which hairstyle matches your face shape best. My second tip is to choose a voluminizing hairstyle. We want to go for haircuts that preserve as much uh, volume as possible while still looking like an intentional hairstyle. And that means reducing the amount of layers you get in your hair. Certain blunt cuts can really maximize the amount of hair it looks like you have at a certain length. Your hair will also look thicker as a whole. This is not to say you can't get any layers, but just be mindful of the amount of hair that is getting trimmed away for layering. Same goes for bangs. Uh, blunter and thicker cuts will give the illusion of more voluminous hair. Another thing that can give the illusion of more volume is getting lowlights or highlights. And when I say this, I don't mean like lowlights in the early 2000s sense. I'm talking about highlights and lowlights that can be integrated and blended into your natural color. We all have some degree of natural color variation in our hair due to things like sun exposure or age. However, our natural hair is for the most part one shade, and when it's pretty fine and lacks shine, it can look pretty flat. By adding things like highlights that allow your hair to really catch the light, you can add a lot of dimension and body into your hair. Alright, now let's get into the styling tips and the products or types of products that I would recommend. I personally tend to air dry my hair because I wash my hair at night, but if you are the type to blow dry your hair, 
try flipping your head upside down when you're doing it. That way your hair is going to kind of dry in that upside down state. So when you stand back up, your hair is going to be hoisted up by the root. Also spritzing a modest amount of texturizing spray before you blow dry can also help to build volume. Something that you can actually do in the next five minutes uh, to really add volume to your hair is to change how you part your hair. And I don't mean this just in the simple way of turning your middle part into a side part, although that really does help. This method of hair parting is for when you want to increase the height of your hair or at least the appearance of your hair when someone is looking at you straight on. And in doing so, it will prevent your hair from looking flat at the root and it will make it look more voluminous. Okay, there's several variations of this hair parting trick that I'm going to mention. What you want to do is take the front part of your hair, like the part of hair that you would use to cut bangs. And what you want to do is style it in a side part. Then with the rest of your part that is behind this front area, you're going to want to style it also in a side part, but on the opposite side. And you can really play with how much volume you want by how many times you alternate the part. The most dramatic version of this is basically a zigzag shape where the part alternates side by side all the way down. In terms of hair curling, heat can be especially hard on finer hair, so I personally recommend using heatless curling methods instead. They're a lot less work because you let your hair do the magic overnight as you sleep. As I mentioned in my last video on always looking polished, heatless curls can really be a game changer for your routine. At the end of this video, I'm going to do a more talk through tutorial on how I do my bobby pin heatless curls. But for now, let's keep going with these styling tips. The next few tips relate to the types of products that I would recommend. I found that it's best to choose shampoos that promote themselves as voluminizing rather than moisturizing or nourishing. I know a lot of products claims just tend to be marketing, but I do think that shampoos that claim to be moisturizing often have richer ingredients that can really weigh down finer hair. You also don't want to use conditioner in general on your roots because it can really make your hair look greasy and overwhelmed I guess by all the product. Unless you have extremely dry hair, I'd say to just condition the ends because that's where your hair tends to need the most nourishment. For most hair types, I really don't think it's necessary to wash your hair every day because that can actually strip your scalp of its natural oils. And when you get rid of this like naturally protective layer, your scalp's going to produce even more oil to try and compensate. So you could end up with greasier hair than if you just washed it a couple times a week. However, I know that fine hair can look greasy um, even when it's not overwashed. So to that, I say make dry shampoo your best friend. And I think dry shampoo as a whole really tends to help infuse the hair with volume. The one that I use the most is just the original dry shampoo from Batiste. I've tried others that just kind of leave a sticky film on my hair and don't really help with oil reduction. If I'm in a pinch and have no dry shampoo at home, something that I can rely on is actually baking soda. Just as baking soda can be used to remove grease from dishware, it can also be used to reduce the oil on your scalp. A quick note though, um, if you do use baking soda, please be mindful of the amount you use, especially if you have dark hair like me. What you want to do is to massage it in gradual amounts so that you don't end up with a giant white patch. You can also sprinkle it into your hairbrush and then comb your hair that way if you feel like more than just your roots are feeling more oily. A product that I use to reduce frizz is this smoothing gel. It's from OGX and it's this smoothing and liquid pearl luminescent serum. Honestly, don't be like me and buy it just because you think it'll make your hair sparkly. If you use the proper amount, it really won't add any glitter into your hair, but it will add shine and definition to your curls. I like it because it's one of the few things that I've tried that doesn't weigh my hair down and really helps with styling. Like I mentioned earlier, texturizing sprays can be really helpful to um, building up shape in your hair. They can also be a great alternative to emphasizing your curls without using hairspray. Again, fine hair can get easily overwhelmed and uh, look weighed down by too many styling products, so try to avoid using it too many times between washes if you're trying to get more volume. Okay, like I mentioned, here is a more in-depth tutorial on how I do my pin curls. So I wanted to show you guys how exactly I do my pin curls, just kind of step by step. I'd say I do this most nights a week, and putting it up and taking it out in the morning and at night as a whole probably takes only 10 to 15 minutes. And right now I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes, but normally I would be doing this before going to bed. So what you're going to do is take a section of hair that's I think the size of one to two fingers, more towards one finger, 
And what you're going to do is wrap it onto itself, like this. And it is easier when you've already done this the night before and you're just curling, recurling, and re emphasizing the curls that you've already made. But obviously, after I shower, I definitely do this with straight hair. So you're going to take this roll and roll it up all the way to your scalp, and then you're going to set it down flat. If you can see. When you have your hair rolled up like this, you're going to need two bobby pins. And what you want to do is make an X shape. So let me show you. So you just put in one pin like this. Just remember the pin placement of the first one so that you can make this X shape. And here, let me... As you can see, it forms this X, and this is what is going to keep this curl on your head. And I always start with the top front layers and work my way back and down. And I'll eventually, once I have enough hair up, I just take it all to one side. And you can really play with the type of curl that you want. So if you take smaller portions, you're going to have tighter curls. Also, if you make a smaller curl, say like this is a pretty large shape versus this, which is a pretty small shape, these will produce different curl patterns. Eventually, it will be all pinned up and look like this. And now you can go to sleep. Let me show you the back. It basically just looks the same, just curls all around my head. I personally haven't experienced any hair damage, but if you are scared of that, I would recommend putting on a hair bonnet that just kind of protects the hair as a whole. I'll leave one in my LTK, and that'll also help keep it more secure. And this might go without saying, but if you can't get the curl to stay with just two pins, you can pin it more. Um, if you pin things like five times, you might end up with like hundreds of pins in your head, which is not that comfortable. But yeah, it really gets easier and quicker the more you practice. So the first time might be a little hard, but as you keep going, it'll just be pretty automatic and you'll get it done really fast. So yeah, that is all I have for you guys in terms of tips uh, so far. I might do another part to this if I can think of more tips for fine hair. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. I post a lot of fashion content and beauty inspo on there. Again, all of the products that I've shown and talked about in this video will be linked in my LTK down below, so make sure to check that out. And yeah, until I see you guys in my next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye guys!